Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be having a Unity ML Agents tutorial. At the end of the video, you're gonna be able to create your own AI using the ML Agents in Unity. So it's gonna be a great video today. And if you go in to enjoy the video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing and bring us that much closer to our goal of 100 subscribers. And that would be just amazing. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Also, if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can find in the description and in the pinned comment timestamps too, and you can skip around and see exactly what you need. So I'm gonna start out by saying that I'm not really gonna show you how to install ML Agents. There's actually a really good video that I use by Bot Academy. It should be a card in the corner, also linked in the description. Because to be honest, at least for me, installing ML Agents was the hardest part, unfortunately. So. Yeah, so once you got that, you, all the hard stuff is out of the way. So once you do finish that, um, you can come back and watch the video. But for now, let's just, we'll just wait here. Just listen to music. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you should be back now. So by this point, you should have Unity open with the ML Agents example projects and all the necessary files and also know how to train your model. But I will also show you the way I did it, which is probably sh and should be very similar to the way that you're supposed to do it. But let's first talk a little bit about how ML Agents works. First, we have the agent. The agent makes decisions and uses a behavior parameter, which I will go through later, and also has a agent script. We create that script. And in that script, we give the agents inputs. Uh, inputs are very important and should be used correctly. Now you'd probably think more inputs the better, so just why don't we input everything? That's actually not true, because if you give it useless information, you're just gonna confuse it, and then the training process will take even longer. So you wanna give the agent the right amount of inputs, and you can also use ray cast perceptions, I think it's called. Uh, it'll be on screen now what it actually is. And you can pretty much use those to cast a ray in a certain direction, and if it is detectable by the ray, then it gives that as an input, which is very useful. So you can pretty much have it use eyes and know everything around in its world. I actually use that in my can and AI rob a bank video. I actually used only ray perceptions, which was really nice because I didn't have to give it any inputs. I tried and I just figured out that using those rays was just the fastest way to do so all around it so it can tell exactly where it was and what was around it. So that was very useful. But what I could have given it is its rotation, its direction towards the items. Uh, I think it was money in my case. I'd also give it the distance from the money, which would be very useful for the AI to know, and a few other things, but those are the main ones. To give the agent inputs or observations as they are called when talking about the ML agents, you, you do public override void collect observations and the parameter for that is a vector sensor. Uh, you can call it sensor or whatever you want. To give the agent the input, you do sensor.add observation and then in parentheses, you can put whatever your, the input is. So you can do the game object dot transform dot rotation dot Z. You can do the velocity, you can do whatever you want. Also, the data type doesn't matter, so you can do a position, you can do a vector, you can do a float, pretty much anything. And then what you need to do is count all of your floats. So a vector would be three floats, a just a plain float would be one float. So you need to count how many inputs or observations you have, so you can put them inside of our behavior parameter, which we'll use later. Now we're going to talk about the outputs or when we're using the ML agents, we're gonna use actions. So we're gonna do a public override void on action receive. And then in there, the parentheses, you're gonna put a list of a float, which you can name anything I did act. When we're talking about actions, there's mainly two types, discrete and continuous. Continuous, it can be any number, it can be a flow, it can go in between numbers, it can be anything. But when we're talking about discrete, which I mainly use in my games, when the space type is discrete, then you choose how many branches you want and how much each of those branches, how many values it can be. So in my case, I only had one branch and I had four directions. It can go forward, backwards, left and right. So it could pretty much, that one value can be four different numbers. If that value is zero, then you go forward. If it is 
one, you go backwards. If it is two, you go right. And if it's three, you go left. Because remember, coding, you go from zero, one, two, three. So at a high level, that's basically how it works. But now let's go take a look at the code and see exactly what I did. I start out by basically overriding the on action received, adding a float named act, and they also created the variable direction to go. I also did a var action and uh, math f dot floor to int. That's basically changing the float to an int because that's the way that a switch um, can use. That's the only things that it can use. And I basically had a switch function and saying that if um, action is zero, then the direction to go is forward. One is backwards, two is left, and three is right. And then finally, I did an add force direction to go. So that's pretty much taking the direction I got and then just moving it. So this is actually moves it. And that was pretty much it for the movement. Now you can tweak this to the game you're specifically making, but it's the same architecture. You have the inputs or the observations that go into the neural network and then output a output or also known as an action. And you can do that as for as many actions for as many inputs as you need. Use raycast to get more data as another input, but you do not have to specify the raycast as an input in the behave parameter. Speaking of the behave parameter, let's start talking about that. So as you can see, there is a agent script. That's where you put the uh, cleft observations, the on action received, um, and so on. And there's also a decision requester, which you need to add, which you just, it's pretty simple. You just go to add components. And if you've installed ML agents, it should be automatically there. And then the big thing is the behavior parameters. Now this one has a few um, parameters. One is behavior name. That should be the same as in the dot .yam, on the config.yaml file. Now I'm not gonna explain exactly how to do that. Um, it's in the video that I linked in the beginning. Just he'll explain how to do it. But back to the behavior parameters, we'll see that there's a vector observations and there should be a space size. So how many observations there are depends on what kind of, how many observations there is. So that's, there's where you put that float from the beginning. Flashback to when I said, you need to remember that. So you need to count how many inputs or observations you had. So you can put them inside of our behavior parameter, which we'll use later. Yeah, so there you put the number of floats. Um, in my case, I did zero, but you can do it at how many you need. And then you also have vector actions. You There should be a drop down that says discrete or continuous. In my game, it was discrete, but in yours, it may be continuous. And then if you choose discrete, then there should be a number of branches. So you can mess around with that and it'll give you multiple different floats. And then for each one of those, then there should be a number of branch size. So how many options that one float could be. You can change all of that right here. I only did one, so it's vector, I remember action and then zero. The uh, list is zero, so that's how I did it. And then next is the model. We don't need to do that now because we haven't trained a model. Then there's interference device, GPU, CPU, I just kept that CPU. And then there's default heuristic and inference. Heuristic is when you can control it yourself. This is very useful in testing purposes. Uh, you can read a little bit about that. I use it in pretty much everything. And if you want me to do a video on that, I will. Just comment or like and do all that stuff. And then so I'll know to make that. And there's also team ID if you're playing like soccer or something. And then there's also use child sensors. So that decides if you're using sensors from like a child object. So yeah, that's it. Also, for ray casts, ray perception sensors 3D, I think I said that wrong in the beginning, but you have to have a different name for each sensor. Uh, there's a bunch of tags, so it can only detect those certain tags. And also, there's a rays per direction. It's kind of obvious. When you turn move the slider, you should see a difference, so you just pick which one you need, uh, depending on how many rays and how many objects there is and the environment that you create. Uh, see a radius self-explanatory you can kind of see it working on screen now ray length the layer mask so what it will go through uh, start and offset so you can like have it go the start be higher or lower and so that's cool and then there's also the debug so if you want to change the color of each individual ray 
uh, you can do that. So yeah, so that's the ray perception sensor 3D. You also need to give the agent rewards for doing something good and punish it for doing something bad. So in my case, I gave more points the closer it got to the um, gold. So that pretty much incentivizes it to get closer. And the closer it does, the more points it gets. Also, when it grabbed the money, it got an extra five reward. And the syntax to that should be on screen now. It's You just add reward function and then put in a float or an int. But you also want to take away points for the AI doing something bad. Let's say it touches an enemy, it loses points. You also want to give the agent negative points every single second. This incentivizes the agent to move faster, and faster is usually better when working with, working with AI, and it becomes more accurate. I'm currently editing this, and I forgot to explain the end episode function. Now this one's really important because this is how you end the function, so I was like, I need to include this. So basically you'll see it when the enemy f finishes whatever tasks or fails the task. It doesn't change the points or a bad thing, it's just saying that hey, wrap it up, you did it, and let's repeat what we just did. Uh, you can do it multiple places, I did it when it touched the enemy, it got negative points and ended. And also when it gets touches the van, that it gets the points and ends the episode. So yeah. Yep, so that's how you use the end episode function. Unfortunately, I didn't get through everything in this video, and there was a little bit more like the heuristics and also training your model and working with the config file. So if you want to know more about that, you can. there's videos all, about, all over the internet about it, and I will link some in the description. And if you want me to go over it, then show support on this video by liking it, and I will try to bring out in part two. So yeah. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I will answer every single question guarantee you. If it's on this topic, I will answer every single question. Yeah, we'll just say that. And if not, if I don't know it, I will point you to a resource that does, or I will research about it. So there's that. If you did enjoy the video, consider the like button because this took a while to edit and it was a lot of work. So if you could smash like, subscribe if you think the content's worth it, or if you want to see more. We are currently on our subscriber girl of 100 subscribers. So if we can get there, that would be unreal. So yeah, uh, I think this is going to be the end of the video. Yeah, so I will see you next week with another video. Goodbye.